Hey everybody, it's Tim from Lanessa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. So we've been getting lots and lots of questions, actually more questions than I'm used to, regarding which breed of sheep to buy. And it feels like we go over this at least once or twice a year, but I think there's some important points that we haven't talked about regarding this subject before. So I wanna take a few minutes to talk with you a little bit more about sheep breeds and what breeds are best right now. So before we get started today, I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk with you about uh, some things that you may not know. For those of you that are new to Lanessa Farms and new to our channel, welcome. Thank you very much for watching our channel. We're kind of a no frills educational channel regarding sheep and goats. So we have a lot, and I mean a lot of resources available to those of you that watch our channel, and they're all absolutely free. For those of you that are interested, if you go to our website, www.lanessafarms.com, go to the upper right-hand corner, click on downloads. We have medication administration uh, directions. We have dosage sheets. Uh, we even have automated fill-in forms that are on there for sheep and goats specifically. So which breed of sheep is right for you? Well, if you find an individual that's telling you that this is the best breed of sheep, period, they're probably trying to sell you something for more than it's worth. The reality when it comes to sheep is there is no quote unquote best breed. That's like someone saying, well, what breed of dog is best? Well, intuitively you're going to say, well, what are you gonna do with the dog? Are you gonna use it for hunting? Do you wanna use it for home? Do you wanna use it for protection? So on and so forth. And there is no difference when it comes to sheep. There is no, wonderful breed of sheep. Every breed of sheep has different attributes that makes it special. And depending on what you're going to do with that animal will help you to determine which breed is best for you. There is a huge, huge push for Dorpers lately. And I keep hearing it. They're like, Dorpers are the best sheep. The best sheep for what? Are they, do they grow the fastest? No. Are they the biggest? No. Are they the most friendly? No. Do they have good worm resistance yes do they have a really good carcass yes you know they have a lot of positive attributes so there's a lot are they the most prolific no absolutely not so i could go down this list with you and tell you like generally speaking this breed of sheep is best for this thing what is the most prolific sheep probably fin sheep what is the biggest sheep Eh, well, it depends on what you mean by big. If you mean tall and long, then maybe Columbia's. If you mean the largest carcass size, I've seen some South Downs that could put some people to shame, not baby doll South Down, regular commercial South Downs. I'll include a little picture of one of our uh, six month old uh, ram lambs. This is a ram lamb. I'll put that right here. That's a South Down, okay? What's most worm resistant? Well, that's a joke, straight up. I'm just gonna tell you that's a joke. Anyone that tells you that a specific breed has worm resistance doesn't know what the heck they're talking about. Worm resistance is made. Worm resistance is made by hard selection with your animals. If you are willing to cull really hard and keep your worm resistant sheep, you can build a worm resistant flock out of almost any breed. You can build a worm resistant flock out of almost any breed. And with that being said, you can surely get non-worm resistant Dorpers. You can get non-worm resistant Katahdins. So for someone just to say a breed period is worm resistant period, that is someone that's trying to sell you a load of yeah, you know, something for you to keep in mind. Hair sheep versus wool sheep, I, I don't really care. I think we went through a period of time in the early 2000s, maybe to maybe about 10 years in the late 90s, early 2000s, where folks were getting out of uh, shearing. We had of kind of this dearth in shearing to where it was hard to find individuals that were willing to do it. The old timers were retiring and the young people weren't really picking up on it. And it was hard to find a shear. Now, I feel pretty confident to tell you that if you look, you can find an individual that shears 
for a relatively inexpensive price. We're paying $6 a head to have ours shorn uh, by a com professional commercial shearer that can shear an animal, about one animal every minute and a half to two minutes, and that includes a hoof trim. So it's kind of a non, it's kind of a, a non-issue when it comes to wool. You know, if you live in a warm environment, hair sheep might be absolutely just fine for you, but if you live in a cold environment like ours, where it's getting down to 20 below zero at times, and you wanna have them out on a pasture where they're gonna get rained on and snowed on and everything else, you might not be able to get by with having a hair sheep. You may have to have a barn to keep them in. You may not be able to keep them out on pasture is what I'm saying. So there's a lot of things that you have to consider. At the end of the day, the point that I'm trying to make again is this. There is no right breed in particular. There is a breed that's right for you. And possibly the breed that's right for you might actually be a cross breed between a couple different breeds. I'll give you an example. A lot of universities utilize fin sheep. They will take fin sheep and breed them into other breeds because they're very, very prolific. A lot of people will breed in pole dorsets because pole dorsets tend to want to breed out of season. Their, their estrus cycle will more easily allow them to be bred out of season. So again, positives and negatives with every single breed. Another thing that I I want you to remember the takeaway um, is going to be that breeds are not always the same over a period of time. And for those of you that are watching this that have been in sheep for a long time, you know as well as I do that the breed changes over time depending on preferences of the purchasers and preferences of the show judges and other things. So when I was a kid, you know, we had a hundred head of Cordales that I worked with. You know, those Cordales from the 1980s do not look like the Cordales that I see today when I go to Nationals down in Louisville. You know, the pole dorsets used to be very frumpy, very stocky, kind of, um, you know, homely looking. I guess homely isn't the right term, but they were very frumpy. How about that? And now they're big and tall and long because they started breeding them in with Columbias. The breed changes over time. And it, and it can kind of get irritating to me when I hear people say, well, I've been raising this breed for 40 years and this breed is this. Again, no, it's not. It's, it's just not. So do your education, be aware of what you're buying. Don't be afraid of crossbreeding. Just do your due diligence before you start forking over money to someone who's trying to tell you that this breed is the best breed ever. So with that being said, I am Tim from Lenosa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. And I look forward to seeing you again next time.